Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB BAS flash pack on this motherboard here. This is the Gigabyte B650 Gaming X AX V2. Now, do pay attention to the motherboard actual name on these things because the BASes are all individual, and there's a lot of motherboards, especially from this particular brand, where the names are very, very similar. So make sure you get the right version for your specific board. I'll put a lot of links in the video description so you can go directly to them. So if you have this board, you can pick up the links directly from there. And also something else we should point out as well, it isn't mandatory to do a USB BAS flashback on your motherboard. If you've got a processor which is already supported and you just want to update the BAS before you get your PC built, you can do it actually whilst the PC is being built and do it the first thing you do. So as you boot the PC up with the supported processor, you can go into the BIOS and do a BAS update from inside the BAS system itself. So you don't have to do it this way, but for those of you that may be going out and buying a brand new processor, such as the 9800X3D or something which comes after that or after the time of the purchase of the board, because you don't really know what BAS is on the board, getting a manufacturer date is actually quite difficult. And also it's a very good idea to update your BAS to give you the best performance and also stability and potentially security mitigations as well. So with all that out of the way, let's go through and take a look at the things that we actually do need to perform this task. So you will need a USB drive, a little USB flash drive. This one is 32 gigabytes in size. I would strongly suggest you get a 32 gigabyte drive or smaller. You can go smaller, but it does need to be able to be formatted into the FAT32 file system. If you have a drive larger than 32 gigabytes, you can create a smaller FAT32 file partition on the drive, but it just means it's another step. So if you've got a smaller drive, use that. If you have only got access to a larger drive and you want to create a smaller FAT32 partition on it, don't worry, there is going to be a video linked in the video descriptions so you can see how that is done. I won't do it in this video because it just makes the thing way too long. And yeah, that is what you need to do. Also, you need a power supply to power the board itself, as you would probably expect. You don't need too many of the connections, so all you need is the main 24-pin power connector and also the 8-pin CPU power connection. Also, you obviously need a uh, power lead to plug into your power supply to get power to it, but yeah, I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. Also, things which are handy to have, such as a motherboard box, just to put your motherboard on, just to stop it getting static and all that kind of stuff, or just to support the board itself during the flashing process. Something else you'll definitely need is access to another computer, ideally on the Windows ecosystem. You'll need that to go online to the Gigabyte website to download the BOSS and extract it and rename the file. If for some reason you're unable to do that, um, head over to our Discord and let us know what motherboard you've got and we'll download the BOSS for you, extract it, rename it, and post it in the tech support so you can basically cut that bit out should you be experiencing problems. Also again, like I've said previously, when it comes to flashing the motherboard BOSS, this is the bare essentials that you need. You can do it on a fully built system. I always say this, if you do it on a minimalist setup, so just the motherboard, power supply, and a USB drive, that way if anything isn't working, you can kind of limit it down to either a broken board, bad power supply, or you've done something wrong on the USB stick. If you've got a completely fully built system with your graphics card, your RAM, and all that kind of stuff installed, potentially the fault could be anywhere. So it makes it very hard to diagnose. So the quick answer is yes, you can do it on a fully built system, but for me personally, I think it's better to do it on a kind of empty board like this. And also finally, for those of you that don't want to stick around and watch the whole video, if you just want the quick, easy thing of how it's done, get your USB drive, go to the Gigabyte website, download the BOSS file, extract the file, rename the file, put it back on the USB stick, put it in your board, press the USB flashback button, and that is pretty much it. But for those of you who want to know a little bit more and see how the process is done, keep on watching and we'll go through it next. Okay, so for those of you that have stuck around, let's uh, get our flash drive ready. So I'm gonna plug it into the computer and you'll see there the auto players come up. So we can click on there and choose open folder, or you can choose just go to file explorer. The choice is yours. Now this has got a previous BIOS on it, so we're gonna to need to format this drive. So let's highlight the drive. We'll right click on it and we'll choose format and make sure this is all okay. So FAT32 and the default allocation size, make sure the volume label is empty and choose quick format. Click on start, you'll get a message saying that this is gonna erase all the data. So obviously if there's anything else on there that you need to keep, make sure you drag it off of there onto the desktop or something. If you're happy, click on okay. And this will format the drive. As you can see, format has been completed. So now we have a blank drive, so we can close that down. Now the next part is to get the BAS itself. So we'll go over to the Gigabyte website, go into the model for your particular motherboard. Obviously, if you're 
using the same motherboards we are on this one. This is the correct one anyway. Links will be in the video description. So what you want to click on is support up the top here, and then it will go to downloads as a default, and you can go down to the bar section here. If you're not sure which version you need, then realistically just get the newest one. But alternatively, if you're just looking to support your CPU, click on CPU support and you can look at your processors. Some will be supported straight out of the box. So anything with a F1 BIOS version means it's basically supported from the day one release. So all of these processors, you can see what they are. It's uh, all the updates are there anyway. So that is how you know which one you need. You can just get the newest one. That is what I would recommend to do. So go back into downloads. We'll go into BIOS and we've got all our BIOSes listed here. And it tells you on the side of the description what features have been added in the various BIOS releases. And you can see the first release was in uh, December 2023. So we go up to the top here, find our latest version and we'll click on download. This will download to the default location set on your machine. So normally the downloads folder. So when you're happy, we can go to the folder. You can either go straight to downloads or desktop or wherever you locate it. And you'll see this file is a compressed or zipped file. So we need to decompress it or unzip the file. In order to do that, we can do that in Windows easily. Right click on the file and choose extract all. And then it'll ask for a location. We'll just do it straight to the default location here. Click extract and we'll have all our files. Now, if you're doing the BIOS update from actually within the BIOS itself, rather than the USB flashback method, then you copy all of these files onto your USB stick. If you're doing a USB BIOS flashback, you only need the largest file, which is the 32 megabyte one or 32,000 kilobytes. We do need to rename this file. So in order to rename it, you also need to make sure that you can see the file extension. So if on your system, you cannot see the file extension here, go up to view, then to show, and then make sure that file name extensions and also hidden items are checked as you can see there. So in order to rename it, just click on it and highlight it and then we'll delete everything which is there. And we want to call it gigabyte dot bin, B I N. And when you're happy, press enter, you'll get a message come up saying if you change the file name extension, it'll become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are because our motherboard will not be able to recognize a file that has not been renamed correctly. So click on yes. And there we have our gigabyte.bin file. So what we need to do now is to put this onto our USB flash drive that we previously prepared. In order to do that, right click on it, choose copy or cut, the choice is yours, and go to the USB drive, right click and choose paste. And that should put in the right file. Make sure it's the right name and also it is the right size. So once that's done, we can close all these windows down. We don't need any of this anymore. And now we can take the USB drive out of the computer and head over to our little test bench system. Okay, so now we're ready to flash the BIOS onto our motherboard. So first things first, let's uh, take a look and see which ports and which buttons we actually need. So you look at the back of the motherboard on the IO shield, you'll see that there is the USB flashback button, which is actually quite recessed on this one. So I might need a pen or something to push that in. And the actual BIOS flashback port is marked up there. It's the one which is color coded in white and it does say next to it, USB BIOS or BIOS. So that is the port we need to use. Any of the others won't work. So you need to use that one for BIOS flashback. If you're doing it from a fully built system, which is operational and you're updating from inside the BIOS, you can use any USB port at all. So let's get this thing put onto our box for uh, stability. So we'll put it up on here and now we need to connect up the power cables. So we're gonna be connecting up our main 24 pin power connector over, over on this side and make sure that's all the way in and sort of clicks into place. And then we also need to connect up this one here, which is our eight pin CPU power connector. On this particular board, there's an eight pin and a four pin. Don't use the four pin, it won't work. It does have to be the eight pin. Uh, I have double checked this on the Gigabyte website. So that is accurate information. You do need to use that particular port. Once that's done, make sure your power supply is plugged in, but switched off and then grab your USB drive and plug it into the appropriate port on the back here, which like I said, is the white one. So I'll plug that in. And at this point, you might want to grab yourself a pen or something, and we'll need this to press in the button. If you can press it in on yours, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can also check and make sure that it's clicky, but anyway, that's entirely up to you. So we're gonna turn on the power supply so we know that's powered. And then we wanna press and hold the USB flashback button for about three seconds, or until we get some visual confirmation that the process is started. 
So you should see the uh, BIOS LED flashing away there quite rapidly. Hopefully you can just about make that out. And also we can see that the power supply briefly span up. Depending on your power supply, some have got the zero RPM mode, so it'll spin very briefly, then it will stop spinning. You'll also see there is one of the LEDs on the top here, which is the CPU LED. That should rem remain illuminated. The USB flashback LED is in here, so we want to be keeping an eye on that and basically waiting for that to extinguish. So I'll give you a close-up of that and you can see what it will look like. So you will notice just to the side of where our button is, there is like a little inspection hole. So you should be able to see that flash in. So what we're waiting for is for the flashing to go fast, then stop very briefly or illuminate fully and then change mode. So now it is in the writing process. So it's flashing a little bit different. Just let it carry on, do its thing. If you get to a point where it's just flashed a whole bunch of times and then stopped, that generally means that the system cannot read your USB drive or the BAS file is incorrect for the motherboard you have. If for some reason it is that, just make sure that your motherboard is a new retail product. If it's an OEM, potentially it may come from another supplier such as iBuyPower, CyberPower, etc, etc. If it comes directly as a pre-built PC, check on your manufacturer's website for that PC that they have a specific BAS update which you can use. Otherwise, for everyone else, just keep an eye on your flash in and be patient. Should take about four to five minutes, maybe slightly longer, but around that sort of time. And uh, we're just waiting for the USB flash LED to extinguish itself. Okay, so there we go. We just heard the power supply click off and we can see that the BAS flashback LED in here is now turned off. So we are pretty much done. So all we need to do now is to basically turn off the power supply, remove the USB stick. And that is pretty much it. So there we go, that was pretty straightforward. All we need to do now is uh, turn off our power supply. If you want to, you can disconnect everything and now you can start rebuilding your PC. Alternately, if you're um, a little bit concerned that maybe it didn't flash, maybe now is a good time to plug in your processor, put on a cooler, stick in some RAM and make sure that you can actually get a BIOS post screen. That is entirely up to you, but in terms of the flash in, that is all that is necessary. At this point, if you're having any problems or it hasn't worked as intended, feel free to reach out to us in the Discord or alternatively in the comment section below. You'll get a much quicker response on the Discord, but the comments, I do answer each and every one of them. So feel free to do that if you wanted to. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Hopefully it's been interesting and informative. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.